Boys and girls, Monday is President's Day, and I had a thought last night. I wondered what kind of art some of our early presidents enjoyed. And I found out that George Washington's love of physical landscape easily translated to his love of landscape painting. And at the time, this was a taste that not other collectors shared. Landscape is when you are making the outside world the main portion of your visual artwork. So that it doesn't have people in it, it doesn't necessarily have a house in it, that the nature outside is the most important. Now we know that George Washington designed Mount Vernon and it's very famous for its portico. It's considered a great contribution to the American architecture. And unlike some of the type of architecture in Europe at the time, it was more simplistic, clean lines. His garden was also quite famous. And again, not the formal type of garden that one would see in England. I hope to see these someday, but in my research, I found out that the landscapes in the Mount Vernon mansion that George Washington purchased are by George Beck, and they're still there today. So I look forward to seeing those landscapes in the future. So this led me to the idea that we are going to work on a landscape today. Again, this is where nature is the most important part of the artwork, not a house, not a person. So boys and girls, in honor of George Washington's love of landscapes, that's what we'll do today. This will be a simple one. I will put on the Google Classroom a little more complicated one that you might enjoy doing of the mountains, but we'll stick with the simpler one today for the video. All right, so we start with the trunk of the tree, two curved lines. And then we're going to go around and make the top of the tree with some zigzag lines. Now we need ground. And we're going to make a few flowers. Next month we should see a few flowers. Start with the center of the flower first and then embed the big petals around it. Okay, a stem for another one and put the center and then the petals around it. So this is called the foreground because it's closest to us, at least visually it's closest to us. Now let's create a sense of distance. And we'll go with our flower again. Big petals around the center circle. So it's like the mid-ground. And then we're going to put a line here that's going to allow us to create the background, which gives us the feeling that there's distance. It's far away. So we're going to make couple more trees that are far, seem far away to us as the viewer. Okay, of course then we can put the sun and these curved lines to create birds. Okay, so coloring can be somewhat up to you. Obviously, the tree needs to be green, so you need to color that green. And like I usually do, I'm going to add a second color to create some depth. And just because it's so gray outside right now, let's create pink flowers to remind us that Yes, spring will be here next month. So I'm creating pink petals and I'm going to use the darker rose colored pink for the center. 
okay and this bush can be painted or crayon colored rather with kind of a greenish yellow and then we can add some more green to it we can put green under the tree to represent the grass and we can make our trunk brown and again boys and girls I'm doing this quickly because of video time but you can be much more careful in your coloring and get all the spaces colored in and we can do the trunks here and actually I should connect that right there okay and the bush and then more green for the top of the trees of course we're going to make the sun yellow all right boys and girls you can add a lot more color but because of video time we'll leave it at that and as i said before i will put a more complicated mountain scene that you could do as a landscape in your Google Classroom. It's a video that you could follow. Until I see you next week, I hope you have a happy Valentine and President's Day. This is Dr. D. Bye-bye.